Hi everybody and welcome to another Lightburn Quick Tips. Today we're going to take a look at flood fill within Lightburn. So flood fill is a optimiz an optimization option um, that really helps when you're trying to scan vector uh, images. Um, so let's take a simple example here. This is uh, just something really easy. I'm going to take a square and I want to put a frame around it. So uh, we'll offset this and we'll offset that by um, five millimeters, sure. So what you've got now is you've got a framed rectangle or a framed box. And I want to engrave just the frame portion of this. So let me turn flood fill off and we're at 150 millimeters, 50% power. So just a, a, an average K40 engraving speed, nothing, nothing overly fast, nothing overly slow. And let's take a look at the preview. So when we look at the preview, the first thing I want you to notice is my cut distance is just shy of 36,000 millimeters, so just under four minutes of cut time. My rapid moves, take a look at this number, 143,276 millimeters and almost 12 minutes worth of rapid move time. Um, so if I run through, and six, almost 16 minutes total, so if I run through my preview here, you'll see that as it scans, it does full traversal movements from left to right, uh, engraving both the left vertical and the right vertical in the same pass. So what you end up with is a lot of travel between these two that doesn't need to be there. It's a lot of white space, your laser's not burning, there's no reason for it to be moving back and forth inside this square. So what I'm going to do is go back into scan and turn back on flood fill scanning. Now I'm in version 0 0.7.00, so as of the time of this video, it's the latest version. Um, so I'm going to turn back on flood fill scan and look at my preview again. And you'll notice that my total estimated time went from almost 16 minutes down to 4 minutes. And we can account for all of that time saving and my rapid moves because my cut distance hasn't changed. It's still thir just under 36,000. It's still almost four minutes of cut. But my rapid moves went from 148,000 or whatever it was down to 744. Um, took me from 12 minutes down to three seconds. That is a huge time savings and I'll show you what it's doing. So it actually will do a lot of smaller back and forth moves while it's burning without all of the white space moves. So it'll run, in this case it's chosen to run the entire bottom first and then it's going to run a whole bunch of rapid back and forth as it works its way up the left vertical. When it gets to the top it's going to go entirely from left to right on that burn and then it's going to work its way back down the right side with a whole bunch of little movements burning. Um, so what you're giving up is you're giving up all that travel time across this entire object or across this entire rectangle with the laser not actually doing anything productive. So it's a huge optimization. It's a huge time saving. Um, it's, it's a big uh, saving on wear and tear of your machine especially. Um, and it's great for guys that maybe have a a slower machine like the diode, the smaller diode lasers, um, the K40s and such that, uh, you know, as you, as you start pushing them, um, you start dealing with tolerance issues and stuff like that. So this allows you to actually slow down, um, slow down your scan, your, your speed, maybe lower your power down, um, but still achieve much faster results because you're omitting all of that white space. So, Again, this is for um, the scan option or even in scan and cut. Um, obviously, you would do a scan, flood fill, and then cut would go around and trace the outsides. Um, so it's something that you can play around with. Um, let's take a look at it real quick in text. So I'm not quite sure how the algorithm works for this, but it seems to look at what it can tackle back and forth um, and, and get the most effective burn out of during its travel time and kind of builds up a, around that. So if we look at the text, you'll see um, it scans it kind of kind of funky, but when you really pay attention to what it's doing, you'll see that it's, you know, it's decided that it can go full left and right here and get the most impact with the least amount of moves. Um, and it runs that algorithm kind of all the way up and looks for where the most the optimal path is 
um, for how much burn time versus how much travel time. Um, especially when you get up into like the tops of the D and the tops of the B, you'll see that it runs those separately. Um, the upper section of the F, it kind of runs that on its own. So um, it really, it, it kind of looks wonky here, but it's a faster process. So we're looking at, <clears throat> if I take the boxes, the boxes out of here, <clears throat> we're looking at two minutes and 19 seconds there versus, or let me actually turn off, um, I'll turn it back to just scan. So we're looking at two minutes and 15 seconds versus a flood fill uh, with flood fill on. If we turn flood fill off, we're looking at two minutes and 52 seconds. So it's a, it's, it's not as much of a time saver when you're dealing with a lot of close objects like this, but it is a time saver. Um, and any time you can save is money back in your pocket as well as uh, less impact on your machine. So it saved you know, a little over 30 seconds of time doing it via flood fill. So play around with it. Um, you'll find that it uh, is uh, a really useful um, optimization tool. And uh, if you have any questions, post them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, go post over at the Lightburn Software Support Group on Facebook. I, as you can hear, my Facebook messenger going crazy. Um, you can go post them over there and uh, good group of guys. If you like these videos, don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel. I've been a little bit lax in getting some of the videos out lately, but I'll do my best to get back on track and put out some more of these uh, tips as we go along and as new versions of Lightburn uh, hit, uh, hit the market. Thank you, everybody.